Our governor calls Utah the startup capital of the world, and it tracks. We've got a fast-growing, well-educated population and a buzzing economy. And just last week, Utah unveiled the Startup State Initiative, a resource portal for entrepreneurs. From step-by-step -step guides to a business plan generator, startup.utah.gov is now the first stop for starting or growing a business here. That's startup.utah.gov. Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. The Salt Lake City Council is exploring some very big ideas right now, from a Rio Grande district to a new downtown sports district, to raising our sales tax. Executive producer Emily Means is here, and we break down when we will get answers and how you can weigh in. Plus, some picks of the week that really feel like spring. It's Friday, April 19th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Good morning, Emily Means. Good morning, Ali Vallarta. Before we get into Salt Lake City Council bureaucratic business of the week, we should give everyone a quick heads up. If you have not heard, this weekend is the Salt Lake City Marathon. Do not leave the house before 11 a.m. on Saturday. <laughs> that is actually the correct advice to be giving this weekend, Allie. Without fail, I forget that it's the marathon. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go out for brunch. I'm going up to mm -hmm. 15th and 15th or something. No, just don't. Mm -hmm. Just, Just don't, don't do it. We'll share a map in the episode notes. It's also going to be in our newsletter this morning of all the various road closures. They basically go from like Federal Heights, top of the avenues, mm -hmm. down to like downtown Holiday. People yeah. are going to be running around all over this city from like 5.30 a.m. until 1 p.m. And to your point about going out places, I also am always surprised. It's not just that the road might be closed. It's also that the place you're going might be closed because they themselves huh. don't want to deal with it. Like I saw Table yeah. X Bread posted on Instagram this week and they were like, we're just closed Saturday. I like, think we don't should come down here. <laughs> we should make it like a citywide holiday or something. Yeah. <laughs> Just so Honestly. people don't have to have to try to get to work in the middle of the marathon. That's kind of a great idea. Except I do feel like people running around this city, I would like the hospital to be staffed. Oh, good point. Not to jinx anything. It's always a wonderful success. And congrats to everyone who's been training to do this. If you're on a marathon, I'm impressed by you. Yeah. Full stop. I don't know why you are the way you are. I don't relate to you, but good for you. <laughs> if you see me running 26 miles, know that I am in danger. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a zombie apocalypse situation, really. Yes. <laughs> That's the only way it's happening. Yes. Okay. The Salt Lake City Council met on Tuesday evening and had quite the meeting. Lots to cover. It's amazing how they have such highs and lows of business. <laughs> like, right. Yeah. Some days it's like, oh, maybe we should just talk about, um, I don't know, restriping this road. <laughs> and then other days it's like we're meeting as the redevelopment agency and we have 900 things on that agenda. And then we're, we're meeting as the council. It's yeah. nuts. <laughs> Let's start with this Rio Grande district. Yeah. Which it kind of feels like, was this also your impression? The city council has been reviewing the citizen-led initiative called the Rio Grande Plan, which we did a show on. We'll link it in the episode description for maybe a year now. And this feels like the compromise. Was that also your read? They're like, compromise? how about this? I'm not sure because for some council members, they were like, this doesn't seem to be anything like what they're proposing with the Rio Grande plan. Oh. So it's not a compromise. It's an alternate, maybe. It's an alternate. And it seems like it's something that they've had in the works for a very long time. It used to be called, um, I think, like the station, what was it? Station Central Plan or something. Central like Station. Central Station Plan. And it's all about like revitalizing this little couple of blocks uh, right behind the historic Rio Grande Station on 3rd South and like about 5th West. Um, so seems like it's been in a work in the works for a long time, well before the Rio Grande plan. But this is yeah. this is a pretty cool proposal, Allie. I, I was totally surprised by this. Yeah, I like it too. So 
right behind Pioneer Park, which is where the big Salt Lake Summer Farmer's Market is, is the Rio Grande Depot, which has this light up neon sign. And it was sort of like, for a while, our train hub and things were very romantic and people walked quickly like in an old movie. And then that sort of area around there became a place where a lot of unsheltered people were yeah. hanging out for a long time because there was like open space, there were some shady spots. It, it made sense. It was kind of close to resources downtown. And there was this thing, uh, I don't know, five, six years ago now, called Operation Rio Grande, which is where basically the city and the state came together to displace everyone unsheltered who was in that area. Now we've kind of come back around to where that's near where our temporary like yes. homeless camp is. And ever since then, there's been this sense that this area needs to figure out what we're going to do with it, basically, because A, it's our transit hub and B, it's this like beautiful, historic depot. Right. And so the Rio Grande plan is this idea to totally bury the railroad tracks back there. Mm -hmm. And it's really expensive. It could cost about $5 billion, and it would require a company that was founded when Abraham Lincoln was president to like agree to bury all of their tracks, and that's a lot of logistics and heavy lifting. Yeah, This new plan, it feels like what it's trying to do is connect like – UTA's kind of hub yes. where the trains are, Central Station, and the Rio Grande Depot through basically like a series of vibey streets. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm calling I, them. I think so. When you look at these mock-ups, which we've been getting so many of for various parts of downtown lately, Emily, it's just like, it's like someone took like a green streets. colored pencil and they just go... <laughs> Trees, over. trees, trees, trees. Yeah, they're like <laughs> tree, 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 bench, person walking, they have a latte, uh, another bench, a troubadour. There you go. <laughs> That's funny, Allie. Yeah, I mean, they're really posing this as, what did they call it? Like the best transit-oriented development in the state. And that could be the case because it's right next to UTA's Central Station, which is also where Amtrak pulls in, uh, where the Greyhound bus system pulls in. And so mm -hmm. if they execute this, like you won't even need a car to go there, right? Because you could just hop on the tracks line and yeah, ride it for free all the way to this district where there will be things like uh, parks and festival streets and mid-block crossings and mm -hmm. retail and housing. And so that's kind of the grand vision for this area because right now there really isn't anything except, like you mentioned, the temporary shelter community, which is temporary, it will be mm -hmm. moving, and like other vacant fields, it seems like. I think it's so funny that the Rio Grande and Central Station will be connected by something they're calling Festival Street. Yes. I'm like, are we in the world of Richard Scary? Like, what, what is Festival? Like, well, it's, it's cool very because Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. They'll be able to close it down and have festivals there. And one way that they have used the Rio Grande Station in the past, I don't know if they're still doing... No, they're not doing the winter market there anymore. But they used to hold the winter farmer's market in that mm -hmm. station. And so I'm kind of thinking of this as a way to activate this space year round, which would be really exciting. Yeah. And the other thing that this will connect is the Green Loop, which is something yes. we've also talked about a lot on this show, which is an effort to create this kind of like rectangle around our downtown central kind of business district that is a pedestrian forward, bike friendly loop of greenery, like almost yeah. like a rectangle of streets that are like almost parks, basically. Yeah. Like if a park was the shape of a street. And like a cycling and pedestrian pathway that connects these parts of the city. So right. that was very strategic of them to work it into this particular project. A hundred percent. So the Green Loop would basically pass right in front of the Rio Grande Depot on 500 West. It is hard to talk about blueprints. It doesn't make for great audio, does it? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, everybody, but we'll link the staff report if you really want to see it. Well, there is this lovely presentation that you can kind of scroll through, and it has some really nice, you know, of those squiggly little green drawings that you can look at, and it will make a lot more sense. But yeah. 
One of the things that I kept thinking about when I was cruising through this is when we talked to Salt Lake City Mayor Erin Mendenhall on the show and asked her what she thought the biggest opportunity was for our city in her second term. She said the Green Loop. Right. And it's clear now that the city's vision for the Green Loop is bigger than just, you know, those four blocks per se, that it's more like how do these things then connect? Yeah. And if all these different facets of this giant rectangular like park thing develop these kinds of like districts and transit centers, that is just going to dramatically change sort of the feel of a lot of these downtown spaces. Yeah, Allie. And I mean, we'll talk more about other projects that will change the feel of our downtown <laughs> in just mm -hmm. a moment. But mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of excitement around this, although some city council members were like, whoa, 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 we're moving way too fast on this. I feel like we need to work out a lot of the details before we make any movement here. While others were like, OK, we've already waited long enough to do anything with this land. Can we start making progress on this uh, on these vacant lots? So I don't know. I'm excited to see this. And I'm especially excited to have um, something built up around transit, because really that area right now is not a place that I want to spend time in. Like there's not a ton to do over there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious how this will be in conversation with whatever UTA wants to do with that mm -hmm. central station there. Um, maybe the city and UTA are in talks, but uh, yeah, it's building out a different vision for, for this part of the city. Definitely. I also think it feels like when I look at these sort of blueprints and think about this strategy and the way that it's using existing space and the way that it's connecting existing dots, it feels like a true public investment, mm. like mm. making streets safer, connecting places we need to get. This kind of city planning feels so authentic to the idea of like public investment and public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We now need to talk about another thing that the city council is going to be moving very quickly on, which is the downtown sports and entertainment district revitalization zone, which is basically giving... Um, billionaire jazz owner Ryan Smith, a new or totally revamped NBA stadium and home for his new and totally revamped NHL team that he's about to acquire, the Coyotes from Arizona. Whereas that feels a little bit more like a public to private investment, like uh -huh. we're funding his dream. This feels like we're funding a Salt Lake City dream. And I think that's why it's easier for me to get excited about the Rio Grande District. If I say to you, I need to improve my posture, chances are you are groaning back at me, ugh, same. And if you're open to changing that, connect with Chandler at Embodied Patience. She teaches the Alexander Technique, an educational method for understanding our movement habits. The Alexander Technique has long been a favorite of stage actors and musicians, people with famously good posture. And now Chandler's practice makes it available to all Salt Lakers. I work at a desk and I spent a decade sleeping on memory foam. My spine is doing its absolute best. And when I spent an hour with Chandler, I was surprised how easy it actually is to stand up straight, if you're doing it right. There was a weightlessness that I didn't see coming and very gentle considerations made my arms feel longer and my head feel taller. Visit embodiedpatience.com to connect with Chandler and learn how to move with more ease, less pain, and more joy. I guess the real breaking news here, Emily, is that Salt Lake sucks. <laughs> <laughs> or so, so says Arizona Coyote fans. <laughs> uh, what you're hearing is... Fans of the Arizona Coyotes in Tempe, Arizona, watching their team play their last game in Arizona against the Edmonton Oilers and chanting Salt Lake sucks because Ryan Smith, Utah billionaire, owner of the Utah Jazz, is about to swoop up that team and the branding will stay in Arizona 
but the bones of the team, the coaches, the players are going to come here to downtown Salt Lake and play in the Delta Center until it's totally reworked, which is the total reworking of which is something the city council finally talked about on Tuesday. Oh my God, Allie. I feel like we've been holding our breath until this got to the city council. And I feel like listening to this meeting, I I tuned in, the city council had also been holding their breath. Like, okay, here we go. Buckle up. Mm -hmm. So this week, the council was briefed for the first time on the Capital City Revitalization Zone, which in plain speak is basically the entertainment and sports district that will be built around a new arena for an NHL team. And an NBA team and or an NBA team kind of is is how it's spelled out in the legislation. I mean, the way this kind of came together is that it seems like Ryan Smith has been very coy boy about whether or not the Jazz would leave downtown Salt Lake. He had the downtown alliance and the mayor and city officials on their heels trying to figure out how to get the Utah Jazz to stay downtown. The same time he kind of went to the legislature and was like, this is what I'm going to need. And the legislature passed a bill that, I mean, kind of pistol whips the city into developing this downtown entertainment district um, for the Utah Jazz and the to-be-named NHL team. The bill specifically states, like, this is for an NBA and or NHL owner. Mm -hmm. And the sense we're getting from the city is that they don't love the rushed timeline here. Like, they're a little bit stressed out about how they're being expected to move quickly. But tale as old as time, cities being told to what to do by the Utah legislature. Oh, true, true, true. I mean, that's straight out of their, their playbook. Um, the city council has a lot to consider, Allie, including raising our city sales tax by 0.5% to mm-hmm. fund this district, uh, as well as sorting out and and negotiating basically like a a general plan and development agreement for what this district will be like. And that includes so many things, Allie. It includes a plan for public safety, a plan for homeless mitigation, for parking and transportation and all of this. And they need to figure it out by September 1st, as written in state statutes. So they've got a really, like a really sped up timeline here to make sure all of the pieces fall into place as laid out in the law. Just to touch on what it would look like to raise the sales tax in our city by half a percentage point. And that's not just the downtown. Like it's not like, oh, we're raising the sales tax in this district to fund this district. Whether you are shopping in Sugar House or the avenues, you're going to be paying that extra half a percent sales tax to fund this 10 block district. It is expected to generate between 33 and 54 million dollars a year for up to 30 years. That is so much money that our little city could spend on so many different things, I just got to say. But what's really interesting to me about it is all that money has to go to this entertainment district. It Uh cannot be used for other things. We can't pick out whatever else. That district that you're describing that they need to basically write a master plan for is going to be not to exceed 100 acres, probably kind of exactly around that. Salt Lake City blocks are each about 10 acres. So if you break that down, it's basically a 10 block Mm -hmm. kind of radius that they're working with. Aside from like, what do we do? What comes down? What goes up? Like just thinking about all the different stakeholders at the table for this, like that includes land owned by the LDS Church. That includes the Salt Palace Convention Center, potentially like a Bravanel Hall. That's all owned by Salt Lake County, not the city. Then you've got city-owned stuff. You've got the Delta Center itself, which is owned by Smith Entertainment Group. So they're going to be at the table, naturally. That's Ryan Smith's parent company, basically. I I do not envy (laughs) the city council. I do not. And they're going to get so much shit for this rush timeline because basically the result of all this is like very little public input. Right, right. So I mentioned the September deadline for the plan. That is not the deadline to raise the sales tax. The city council has until the end of the year to do that. But in terms of 
Public input, Allie. The city council is looking at discussing this immediately and hopefully voting to approve a potential development agreement by July 2nd. I'd Mm -hmm. like to note that the timeline they've laid out here, essentially from May to July, is their budget season. Mm -hmm. So how, how are they going to have time to hold all of these things in their head? And, you know, like, it feels unfair. And it's unfair to the city council. It's unfair to Salt Lake City residents who maybe would like a say in this project and how it will dramatically change our city. Mm -hmm. Um, But I guess like that's what you get when you ask the legislature to make something happen for you. And they do. (laughs) You get the city gets railroaded, essentially. That's also what you get when you make sweeping proclamations that you'll do whatever it takes to keep the jazz downtown. You know, I remember when we reported earlier this year that the jazz were considering a move to the suburbs. And a local reporter, Taylor Anderson, retweeted our show and said, Salt Lake City should be careful about using public funding to retain this team. Like, we should really be careful when these sorts of giant institutions are potentially using us to get what they want, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, whether that's funding or land or even just land use decisions. And that's kind of where we're at a little bit. Like, it kind of feels like we're left holding the bag and... It could be really exciting. Like there are obviously going to be outcomes of this that are cool and great. And there are going to be outcomes of this that are not. But it's a little hard to stomach watching people parade it out like it's a victory. If you are really interested in what kind of models the city is looking at for this sports and entertainment district, we know that a lot, meaning like 80, city officials visited the Deer District in Milwaukee Mm. to look at it earlier this year as potentially a model. So, I mean, Google the Deer District, like have a look at that sort of what they've built for the Milwaukee Bucks in downtown Milwaukee, and that will give you a sense of the models that are being explored here. I want to quickly shout out former Salt Lake City Council member Luke Garrett, who is also an urban planning expert. He's been writing for Building Salt Lake, and he... he He did not mince words in his reporting on Mm, this topic, Allie. He said, essentially, these concepts are being developed not by members of the downtown or larger Salt Lake community, but by the negotiating teams of a Provo billionaire and the Salt Lake City mayor behind closed doors. And that doesn't make me feel good. I got to be honest. Worth noting, Luke Garrett is also a former Salt Lake City council member, and he ran for mayor once. (laughs) So he's like also not just from a development angle, but also very much like someone who is a solid watchdog on the council and understands how these things kind of work. Yeah. I mean, one of the things that I think has been frustrating to me in the conversations leading up to this is like the way that downtown Salt Lake is being talked about. Yeah. Because like you live downtown, Emily. I live I used to live downtown. Technically, I guess I'm a couple blocks removed now. And, like, there was this Ryan Smith tweet a couple months ago that was, like, it's not about the arena. It's about revitalizing a downtown that, like, desperately needs this kind of investment. And there's this, like, you know, whenever someone's trying to sell you something, they first have to sell you on the problem. Like, a a Mm. good pitch always starts with, like, here's the problem you've got. And it kind of convinces you that your problem is, like, really, really bad. And then it comes in with the solution. Mm -hmm. And I'm, like... Mm -hmm. You know, my pharmacist lives downtown and is raising kids downtown and takes them to the Galvin Center. They call that their backyard, like their playground. And they have like a a good life. And like there's so much about our city that's working. And I do think it's quite safe and quite beautiful and quite peaceful. And people are kind to each other. And like, yeah, we live close. We have problems. And you're going to see them more closely when you live more closely with your neighbors because you're going to see your neighbors more. Yeah. But like nothing that's happening in downtown Salt Lake, whether that's food insecurity, whether that's poverty, is not happening all around this state. And so I think for me, like a billionaire telling us that we should give him money to solve poverty is making me feel crazy. He doesn't even go here. No. He doesn't Um, even go here. mm -hmm. I'm like, you could just house everyone downtown for like, it'd be nothing to you, but whatever. So 
I mean, I guess I say that to say, like, in terms of media literacy around this, listen very closely for when these conversations over the next, what, four weeks that we're going to have them are being framed as a solution to, like, you know, this Gotham City picture of downtown. Hmm. And listen really carefully for whether that's been your experience. Hmm. Well, if you want to follow along, the city council is going to talk about this again on May 7th. And guess who's going to be there? Smith Entertainment Group. So <laughs> I don't know. Should we all show up? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, listen, this is only the beginning. We're going to be talking about this for decades. But I will say, like, holy crap, we are about to radically re- reimagine downtown. Do you think the city would reconsider making Main Street pedestrian only? <laughs> I'm like, we're going to waver on making Main Street pedestrian only because what? Like, we're about to reimagine the whole freaking city. (laughs) Listen, we could do we could make this anything we want it to be as long as we're at the table. Yeah. Rio Grande District, new stadium entertainment district, 2034 Olympic ramp up. Downtown's population is on track to double by 2025. And the mayor was tweeting, hinting at the fact that Salt Lake City might bid for Sundance Film Festival. It's all happening, man. Buckle in, (laughs) peeps. We got you. We got you. If I say to you, I need to improve my posture. Chances are you are groaning back at me. Ugh, same. And if you're open to changing that, connect with Chandler at Embodied Patience. She teaches the Alexander Technique, an educational method for understanding our movement habits. The Alexander Technique has long been a favorite of stage actors and musicians, people with famously good posture. And now Chandler's practice makes it available to all Salt Lakers. I work at a desk and I spent a decade sleeping on memory foam. My spine is doing its absolute best. And when I spent an hour with Chandler, I was surprised how easy it actually is to stand up straight, if you're doing it right. There was a weightlessness that I didn't see coming and very gentle considerations made my arms feel longer and my head feel taller. Visit embodiedpatience.com to connect with Chandler and learn how to move with more ease, less pain, and more joy. Should we do pick of the week? Let's do pick of the week. You want to go first? Sure. Okay. My pick of the week is a volunteer opportunity and a way to get outside in what promises to be a gorgeous weekend for us. So yeah, uh, but is jo- it Saturday after 1 p.m.? <laughs> Listen, Allie, great point. I'm talking about the Jordan River Pedal and Pick this Saturday at 10 a.m. <laughs> so here's what I'm going to suggest, though. The point is, is you can participate as a cyclist for this Jordan River cleanup. I think you should just ride your bike down to the Jordan River. I think what you should actually do is take the newly finished nine line trail all the way to Jordan Park, which is where this pickup starts. Mm -hmm. And they will provide snacks and water. All you need to do is wear closed toed shoes and SPF uh, Mm. and help pick up some trash around the Jordan River and pull invasive weeds. So I think it's a nice way to get outside. And then there will be an Earth Day celebration at the Tracy Aviary Jordan River Nature Center. It's a way to get out of downtown. It's just you need to figure out a way to get there. (laughs) Yeah, true. Trash pickups are incredible because I feel like every time I've ever done a trash pickup in the beginning, I'm like, yeah, like I'm a normal person. I've got my little, you know, gloves and my little bag. And then one hour into it, I'm like, crazed i'm like i'm like scraping gum off the sidewalk i'm like this You're is like, this- my <laughs> jurisdiction and it will be clean like i'm weeding <laughs> it's a maniac you go, you go grem- gremlin mode on uh cleaning up the city yes 100%. it's your true calling 100 percent. i'm just like i don't know much i don't have control over much in the world but i have control over this like 10 foot by 10 foot square <laughs> yeah. of this park and by god it will be gorgeous this is my vision for the city <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. i love that what's your pick ali 
Okay, my pick is Summer Symphonies, which you can start getting tickets to now. So we got a couple exciting music lineups this week. Of course, we got the Downtown Twilight concert series Mm -hmm. lineup. We have a show for you that aired on Tuesday. We'll link it. We got the Red View Garden lineup, which you and I haven't even talked about. That landed. Um, But there are two under the radar summer music events that I'm actually more excited about that also recently dropped. I personally think nothing beats a symphony in the park. It is like the most grandiose, like when I'm watching a symphony in a park and like eating a cheese board, I just feel like I'm like, am I Chloe Sevigny in 1998? Like I'm cool girl. It's happening, you know? I love that. And so two things. One, (laughs) Over at formerly USANA Amphitheater in West Valley, now the Utah First Credit Union Amphitheater, Mm. they are showing Barbie the movie in concert, and it's with a live all-women symphony. That is so cool, Allie. So cool, right? I love just like symphony play-alongs to movies. Mm. That's Mm -hmm. so fun. And outdoors. Tickets to sit on the lawn start at 35 bucks. They've got this four pack of tickets where they're 24 bucks if you buy four. It's on Thursday, July 18th, but you probably want to start planning for it now because I think it'll be popular. It's at 8 p.m. So I will put a link to that in the episode description. What a cool thing. Like, bring the fam. Yes. Yeah. And then the second one is it is the 20th year of the Deer Valley Music Festival, which they do up at the Snow Amphitheater in Park City. Did you ever go to that when you were working in Park City? I never did. I tried to go home as as quickly as possible. That's but. true. Yeah, when you're commuting, <laughs> it's a whole different But vibe. it's beautiful up there. It is stunning, like lush, lush in the summer. And it's when the Utah Symphony goes up there to perform a variety of different shows with a variety of different acts at the amphitheater. The whole lineup honestly is freaking awesome. Whether you like movie scores or you want to go see some good old fashioned Mozart, there are two nights that really appealed to me. One, they're doing Christmas in July. Oh my God. So, so it'd be fun. like symphony Christmas music, which I think if you really got into it, could be a hysterical time. Yeah. And then they're doing the music of Whitney Houston. Oh, wow. Right? Wow. And the symphony, let me just say, overlooking the mountains, hello. The symphony is one of my greatest pleasures in this mm. city. I just mm-hmm. am in awe that we have a world-class symphony right here in Salt Lake. Um, so go see them literally any chance you get. And it sounds like yeah. this is just, uh, what, a, what a way to spend an evening in the summer. This is also a really exciting time to go see the symphony because they are one year into picking a new maestro. The long, long, long time maestro of the Utah Symphony left, and they're still trying to figure out who the new, like, you know, permanent maestro Mm -hmm. will be. So they're auditioning all these, like, different conductors. So we're getting a lot of different vibes and a lot of different people kind of rolling through and conducting. And that's actually fun. Like, it's like a cool transition. So anyway, I'll link both of those in the episode description. And Emily, have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, Allie. See you Monday. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. Our executive producer is Emily Means. Our producer is Ivana Martinez. Our newsletter editor is Terina Ria. And our host is me, Ali Vallarta. Music is by the local band Mitochondria with additional music from all the kimonos. We will be back Monday morning with more from around this city. If you love this show, if it helps you feel more informed, more connected to what's happening here, and more connected to your neighbors or even just me and Emily, will you consider becoming a founding CityCast Salt Lake member? You can get all the details at membership.citycast.fm. It's a fistful of dollars every month, and it really sustains our work. Have a great weekend.